We get our speed from mom and dad. They do stuff super fast. And now they got this new kitchen, so they're even faster. So they can help us with our free throws. The time-saving Frigidaire Gallery line with a quick preheat and smudge-proof stainless steel that resists fingerprints and cleans easily. It's mealtime in no time from start to clean. Frigidaire Gallery. Save more during Frigidaire Gallery bonus days when you buy three or more qualifying appliances. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. Hi, I'm John Mattles. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. Today, we're going to have two guests in the studio. We've got Kelly Cadwallader. He is an author. He wrote this uh, new book. I'll hold it up right there. And also, Kopi is going to be on, uh, along later on here on the program. 436 Me TV Option 11. We're back in a moment. <music> Back here on the program today, it is a Friday morning before the Super Bowl. Hey, will Tom Brady win his fourth Super Bowl ring? Uh, if you're asking me, I'm rooting for the Seahawks, so I hope Russell Wilson wins his second consecutive. The game on Sunday is supposed to be about 3 o'clock uh, or 3.30 kickoff West Coast time, so we'll see what happens there. Hey, a reminder, you can watch us every day, Monday through Friday, on Comcast Channel 187 and 43.6, and of course, my friends, now on 13.1. The replay comes later in the day. Uh, that's on... Uh, 13.6, uh, that would be U2 at 2 o'clock, and then 8 o'clock at night, 13.5 uh, Biz TV. How about the Twitter account? At John Malos, Me TV hasn't been up long, not too many followers, but we're gaining as I speak, my friends, here on the program. A reminder that there isn't much time left to get those mailers in. I'm talking about the water rates right here in the city of Fresno. And, and if you want to contact our friend here at Connect With Me, his name is Mark Standrip. He rakes in or rolls in about 125 grand a year, has not returned a call to us in about three months. So. You know, you would think that he would be fair with all the media. He talks and uh, provides uh, uh, interviews to other stations and other media outlets as far as the mayor and other people are concerned, but not to us. 621-8000 is the number over there. You can call the recording at 621-8618. Hey, how about those mailers due next Thursday? They've got to be inside the city clerk's office. Uh, you can't postmark it by that day, the 5th. They've got to be in the office. What you do is check that box, sign the card, mail it in. They've got to have it in. And you know what? They have about 36 to 37,000 mailers already returned to City Hall. They need 60,000 plus. Don't know if they'll reach that, but still an alarming number of people responding to the city of Fresno, that protest vote. If you mail in that card, that means you do not want your water rates to go up. All right, now the latest on nine-year-old Janessa, uh, Janessa Ramirez, a gun down, murdered. Basically, she's a murder victim. A week ago, Sunday, almost two weeks ago now, she was out by Clinton and Marks uh, with her mother going into cash, a couple of lottery tickets, when a couple of gangbangers or more got into a shooting match and one of those stray bullets traveled more than 300 yards and hit tiny little Vanessa in the stomach and the funeral of course was last weekend i want to remind you that the number is there if you have any information 498 stop or you can call police at 621 2000 now i do want to say that the fresno police department jerry dyer he's the chief of police has called a news conference uh, today for noon at police headquarters downtown fresno have they made an arrest yet on the murder uh, case for janessa ramirez we don't know all we do know at this point is that Police Chief Jerry Dyer has called a news conference at noon uh, at police headquarters in downtown Fresno, not far away from City Hall. So when we get that information, uh, we'll put it up on our website or I'll tweet it out uh, as well and put it up on the uh, Facebook page. All right, to our guest today, and I do want to talk about a book 
that was recently uh, published here. It's called Gold Rush Bandito. Here's the book right here. We'll put it up full screen so you can see it uh, much more clearly. This is about the life and times of Joaquin Murrieta. He was born back in 1829 in Sonora, Mexico, but made his way into California before California became a state. It was still part of Mexico at that time prior to the gold rush. And when I say the life and times, man, it was the wild, wild, wild west back then uh, in the 1800s. He turned out to be a real, real bandito. We're going to talk to the author of this book right now, Gold Rush Bandito, live in our studio, is Kelly Cadwallader. He is the author of this book. And so why is this story of Joaquin Murrieta so near and dear to him? Is there a family connection? Uh, yes, there is, my friends. I think we're going to get the straight to scoop from Kelly in just a moment. 436, Me TV Option 11. Don't forget that news conference, Jerry Dyer at noon today regarding Janessa Ramirez, and also later in our broadcast at 1030. Uh, coming up is the one and only Kopi. We're back with our program in just a moment. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. Spinner's Record. The Valley's Classic Vinyl Headquarters. Carries an inventory of over a half million classic LPs. Shoes from rock, rhythm and blues, country, jazz, and oldies but goodies. Spinner's also buys and sells fully restored old school stereo gear and LP. You can now get a turntable receiver and speakers for below $250. We carry name brands like Morant, Sansui, and Pioneer. At Spinner's, we sell memories. Spinner's Records at 639 East Olive Avenue in the Tower District. Back here on the program, and our thanks to Turf Medics and uh, Lorenzo Neal. He's our guy. Remember the former running back for the Fresno State Bulldogs? He also played in the Super Bowl one year and came within one yard of winning the Super Bowl, but he came up short that year. Anyway, Turf Medics, our sponsor here today on Connect uh, With Me. The Presser with Jerry Dyer at noon. In the meantime, we're going to talk about this book called Gold Rush Bandito. It's not very long. It's about 50 pages long or so. It'll take you just a few minutes to read it. The author, Kelly Cadwallader, is here. So, why the fascination with Joaquin Murrieta? I really don't know, John. I've been fascinated with the guy for 30 years. And uh, Who is this dude, man? Well, he was the bad <laughs> bandito during, what, well, California was still property of Mexico in 1848. Yeah, but who was he? What was he doing? He was born in Mexico, came to California, and did what? He created all kinds of havoc and well, he killed the, uh, many he, people. He, Don't leave your chair, by the way. As, as the history <laughs> as history goes, okay, he was a uh, bad bandito during the gold rush. And yeah. he had a gang of men, up to 105 men, that roamed all throughout the state of California. He murdered miners. Well, the he gang murdered did. Some of the, some of the Indians. He murdered some of the Chinese people that lived in this area. Uh, he came up through Southern California, what was known, I guess it was known as L.A. back then, but there wasn't much there. Uh, came up uh, through the southern part of our state and then traveled north into San Francisco. What happened to him in San Francisco, by the way? Well, he got he, beat up a couple of times, didn't he? Well, he was up in Martinez just in time to watch him hang his half-brother for being a, a mule thief, which he wasn't. Yeah. And uh, he got he got severely beat, and uh, his wife was accosted. And uh, he's been he he's basically a product of his environment. He went through a lot of bad things that made him uh, group with a bunch of the other Mexicans in the area uh, just for survival. Hey, let me ask you though. Um, after they killed his brother, his half brother, um, he went after the people who actually were responsible, and. He didn't necessarily shoot them. He he uh, kind of corralled them with a rope. He roped them, and then dragged them for I don't know how far. But then he th they were decapitated somehow, right? Talk well, talk about that. Well, he he'd go out and uh, try to stay nice and quiet about the situation, and uh, find his uh, find his prey, rope it, and drag it through the uh, the oaks until the. Prey came in contact with the oaks, which would decapitate him. 
Yeah. Now, you know, the governor, Bigler, ended up sending out uh, Harry Love and 20 Rangers after Marietta. And the legend has it that they uh, caught Marietta, they beheaded him, they pickled his head in the jar. And if you check uh, the rates of increase, they collected a half a million dollar bounty on the guy. Well, it never happened. The victors write the history, and in this particular case, the history's wrong. This, what's, well, well, then what's, what's the right story? What's the correct story? This book sets it straight. Tell me the correct story. I'll read the book. <laughs> I already did, but I, that's why you're here to tell us. Well, I'm not going to give up the ending to it, but uh, they never got the guy. And this, this book covers a lot okay. of the Central Valley area, a lot of San Luis Obispo area, a lot of uh, Martinez, San Francisco area. Right. I always had an infatuation with this guy, and I really didn't know why. And this summer... Uh, last summer, my cousin called me and said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm writing a book on Marietta. And she goes, well, that's weird. And I said, what's so weird about it? And she goes, well, your great-grandfather and him were buddies. And I said, yeah, sure, sure. I'm a skeptic. And she goes, no, really. And she said, I saved the letters that they wrote back and forth from 1850. So I had to stop what I was doing because this is a, a, a conglomeration of old-timer stories from up in the mountains up here. I had to stop what I was doing and go through all these letters and filter out all the information of it and uh, reincorporate it into the book. We're going we're gonna to take a break and come back about the ties here to the Central Valley, and we'll talk about this guy that was named Three, Three Finger Jack. In fact, Three Finger Jack is still right here in the Central Valley, not too far away from where we're sitting right now. Hey, the telephone number here is 436-ME-TV, option 11. Hey, not much time left with Kelly because Kopi is going to be in just a bit, so call in. The book is called Gold Rush Bandito about Joaquin Murrieta. Who is this guy? Anyway, today's program sponsored by Turf Medics and Lorenzo Neal. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. Almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent, Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and television the me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. Back here with Kelly Cadwallader, and I'm glad I took that pen away from you. You're sitting there clicking a pen during our interview. That's very distracting. Didn't you know that? I'm sorry, John. Okay. All right. I'm glad you're here, though. I'm glad you're here. I did read the book in its entirety. It's only about 50 pages long. It's a very interesting story about this character, uh, Joaquin Murrieta. Let me just go over this a chapter and verse just, just real quick here. Born in 1829 in Mexico. Um, he made his way up through California, of course, uh, in the 1840s, uh, before the gold rush, or actually during the gold rush, and he was a gold miner himself. He panned for gold sure. and collected a lot of gold, and, um, you know, you, you, you talked about the fact that, he, that they, uh, that some of the miners, they killed his half-brother, uh, Carrillo, hanged him, they raped his wife mm -hmm. numerous times, his wife's name's Rosa. And then, of course, he went after the perpetrators and, and got even with them. But then he formed his own uh, gang of banditos, about 105. And there were four leaders. He was one of them. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Well, the guys did it out of a uh, survival tactic. Uh, the place was being overrun 1,000 to 1 with miners. There were 640 ships in San Francisco Bay that were abandoned. Mm -hmm. Everybody jumped ship and gone to the gold fields. That's where Shanghai came about. This book is straight to the point. Everything in it. There's no There's no. Where fluff. did you get your research? Where did you verify everything? How did you verify everything? 38,000 hours in the library, reading old newspapers, uh, talking to old timers and their families. Uh, this is, it took 30, 38 years for me to put the, all this down in writing. And while I was building the book, you mean to tell me I this was book looking, is 38 years in the making? Yes. 
while I was looking for a lot of the information, I went out to Roding Park looking for uh, Fort Miller, and Fort Miller isn't there anymore, and it was always there when we were kids. And apparently, since the zoo has expanded, they dismantled the fort and sold it to the uh, Table Mountain Rancheria. And the Table Mountain Rancheria was supposed to resurrect it uh, over by the courthouse, I believe, and it hasn't happened yet. Where, so where is Fort Miller now? Uh, I believe it's in storage, but I wouldn't swear to it. Okay, it's not at the bottom of the lake at Millerton. No, right? it's not at the bottom of the lake at Millerton, but that's where it was originally built. And that's one of the oldest, if not the oldest, building ever built in Fresno County. Is that right? That's right. Okay, so let's get to San uh, Joaquin Murrieta and uh, his uh, trials and tribulations here in the Central Valley. What, what's his connection to the valley here? Well, his, one of his favorite hideouts was up on the Tabletop Mountains, and there's stories of them going from the Tabletops all the way up to the high country in uh, um, Mono Hot Springs. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've been all through this area. They go all the way down to, uh, well, they start from uh, Placerville, Mariposa, uh, down to Oakers, Coarse Gold, down into the Tabletops, and they went up to uh, the Mammoth area. Uh, they've been all the way down to the Kings River area. There's stories of them all over the place. But they knew the Central Valley inside and out. Like I mean, Marietta and hand. his boys, huh? Like they the were, back of their hand. Oh, yeah. They were trekking all over the place. They were uh, young from, men, and they were great horsemen. Yeah, they were. They knew that they knew the valley inside out. And so, um, you know, the fact of the matter is, at some point, uh, the governor got fed up. His, his second governor of California, his name was Bigler, right? That's 1850. correct. He got very, very tired of the Mexican banditos coming into California and raping women, killing the miners, killing many of the Native Americans, killing um, many Chinese. of the Chinese that, that lived here that yeah. were in San Francisco and a lot here in the Central Valley. Well, the Chinese so, basically built all the railroads in California. There was yeah. 10, 20,000 Chinese in, in they California. They most certainly did. They most, If you read your history, they sure. did. Sure, they sure. did. And not only that, uh, the governor put out a $10,000 bounty for uh, the, you know, to try to capture or kill Joaquin At today's Mariana. rates, that's a half a million dollars. Okay, and they put about $2,500 for this guy named Three Finger Jack. Who was Three Finger Jack? Manuel Duarte. He was one of the bloodthirsty guys that was in the group. Uh -huh. he, he was a wild man. There's four basic things in this book that have never been published or never written about, okay, uh -huh. that, are, that are totally new. Uh, nobody's ever published or written about uh, the sample gang that came out of the Cold Springs Indian Reservation. Uh, nobody's ever written about uh, Harry, Harry Love collecting a bounty on something that didn't happen. Nobody's uh, ever written about uh, the head in the jar that they turned gonna, in was not talk about that, who, who's three, two, Who was Three Finger Jack? Three Finger Jack was Manuel Duarte. He was one of his uh, sidekicks. And he was a vicious killer, wasn't he? He was great with the knife. He was a he was a wild man. He was crazy. But this whole book only covers their ages, from the age of roughly of 20 to 24. These right. were wild young guys. Right. And so, um, Three Finger Jack. We're going to talk a little bit more about him and what happened to him and uh, his fate and how he ended up at the bottom of Millerton. I think he's still there. Anyway, four three six Me TV Option Eleven. Kelly Cadwallader is here. If you hear all the noise in the background today, we have a lot of screaming kids here in Ventura TV today, my friends. It's a Friday. They're in shopping for washers and dryers, and so that's the noise you hear. It's not a problem. Just don't worry about it. Just everything is under control here at the store at Ventura TV. Hey, uh, today's program, Connect With Me, is sponsored by Lorenzo Neal. He, of course, has Turf Medics, that great company. He's our sponsor today on Me TV Fresno. Calm yourself down. We'll be right back in a moment. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. 
Spinner's Record. The Valley's Classic Vinyl Headquarters carries an inventory of over a half million classic LPs. Choose from rock, rhythm and blues, country, jazz, and oldies but goodies. Spinner's also buys and sells fully restored old school stereo gear and LP. You can now get a turntable receiver and speakers for below $250. We carry name brands like Morant, Sansui, and Pioneer. At Spinner's, we sell memories. Spinner's Records at 639 East Olive Avenue in the Tower District. We just got a text message from somebody. I won't mention names saying I was rude because I, I took your pen away. <laughs> uh, you can no have clicking. It, see that? See how that sounds? It doesn't sound too good on the air when oh, you do well. that. Yeah. Back to Manuel Duarte. Three-finger jack. Who's that? The guy that got a couple fingers shot off in a gunfight. I know, I know, but he <clears> used <throat> that hand to really knife up a bunch of people during the 1840s, oh, yeah. he killed, right? He killed a grizzly bear. He did, I know, I By read that. By hand. By hand. Grizzly bear fell right on top of him with all his guts sprung. And they were they took four or five guys to get the grizzly bear off of him, right? Yeah, it was about 800, 900-pound bear. Yeah. So three-fingered Jack, who had two fingers shot off, was a friend of Joaquin Murrieta's. In fact, they were in the gang together, right? His right, right, right-hand man's his sidekick. And when they uh, decapitated uh, three-fingered Jack, they, they pickled his head in salt water. Put it in a jar. Put it in a big jar, pickle it in salt water, and the other head and hand were uh, pickled in brandy. And I guess that the uh, rangers got tired of wasting brandy. Is that right? Brandy on the head. And when they made the circuit, they were they were showing the head, displaying it for a dollar a look, and they went from San Luis Obispo up to Martinez, San Francisco, over to Sacramento, Stockton, all the way down Mariposa, Oakhurst, when they were showing it. And they got down to Fort Miller that was at the bottom of Millerton Lake. Which is, it's no longer there. We know yeah, that. which has been resurrected. Millerton is there. Fort Miller is not there. <laughs> right, right. And at the bottom of, of the lake now is where uh, the head of Three Finger Jack started to disintegrate or deteriorate in the jar. Is it still, uh, is the jar still at the bottom of the lake? Uh, well, they say they dug a hole at the fort and buried it right there. So now, we assume it's there. It should still be there, but on the north side of the San Joaquin River before the dam was placed in, there was a cemetery. And during a real wet year, the water would wash down and raise all the caskets and coffins and send them down the river. And yeah. they'd find skeletons and bodies hanging in the roots of trees down at Lost Lake at, at a place called Rootsville. Yeah. All right. So, um, interesting. Why stuff. did why did San jo uh, Joaquin Murrieta? Why did he turn to gang? Violence and murder and uh, rape Safety and, and pillage. Numbers. Safety in numbers. Safety in numbers. What there does that there mean? was no law enforcement. There was no law enforcement. You got a brand new state. He was being picked on by the miners when he first came here. Yeah. So picked on by meaning they killed his half brother. They raped his wife. So he saw fit in taking revenge, and so he took to the, the he took to the dark side. Basically, he ended up being a product of his environment, of his surroundings. Right. It was uh, strictly defense. And, uh, you know, the miners are all coming in, and if you've got a good place to pay in for gold, the miners just shoot you or run you off. So the governor put a bounty on his head. Uh, Three Finger Jack ended up at the bottom of Millerton. At one time, authorities, it's either the one bounty hunter who went after him, um, he thought that he had killed Joaquin Murrieta. They decapitated this. this individual mm -hmm. they thought it was him they put his head in the jar but it really wasn't walking uh um uh murrieta was it it was someone else it was someone else his sister verified <laughs> that it was someone else well right? his sister came to see the head and uh if you read the book uh uh, Marietta had a, a very visible scar along the side of his face. And the scar wasn't there from that decapitated head. Correct, because the scar was laid in by one of the miners that had busted a bottle across his face. Right. And the decapitated head that they produced for the, uh, for the, war, uh, for the reward uh, didn't have a scar upon the face. So this bode well for Joaquin Murrieta because people thought he was dead. He then changed his appearance, he changed his attire. And he and his wife got remarried and somehow disappeared uh, throughout the woods 
and valleys of California, well, right? If you, get, if you get remarried back in those days uh, under a fictitious name, there's no written record of it, so who's right. going to know the difference? Right, but is that what happened, basically? No. He disappeared into the night? He disappeared. Different name, different appearance? read the book to find out where he went. I John. read the book. Yeah, here to it took me a month it. to get you to read the book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But I read it. This is all hot stuff. I'd love to uh, have Alan Autry take a look at it and have Who's Dirt he? Road, uh, the old mayor, and oh, and have Dirt oh. Road Productions uh, <laughs> make a movie out of this. It's a great story. It's a no, great but I want to talk story. about what happened to Joaquin Murrieta. He apparently disappeared into the night with this uh, different appearance, different identity. And did he end up in South America? Well, if you go to Lulu.com. And oh order God. the book. <laughs> oh my God! You can find out what the actual. Uh, yeah, and he, he had, of course is. he panned for gold. He collected so much in in the way of gold that he he turned in for paper money. Very he, wealthy. He, very extremely rich. So he had enough to retire two or three lifetimes. His kids, you know, two or three lifetimes. He had enough gold to take care of him and his family forever for a thousand years. I so he disappeared. So. He disappeared, and the theory is he ended up in South America somewhere. Well, that's what I read. Uh, I've heard that. I've heard that. Well, it's right here. <laughs> it's right, my friends. If you don't believe me, where can you get this book, by the way? www.lulu.com, or you can come down to Ventura TV, and I think they might have some down here. Okay. Um, so, is this part of our? California history is you it bet. is it is it in the history books? You bet. Are kids reading about Joaquin Murrieta? This in, in should the history be books taught today? in the schools. Is it being because taught? what is being taught now is not true? Is this being taught? Right no, it's now? not. Not presently. I'll bet my kids, your kid, they don't know who this Joaquin Murrieta guy is. A lot of them don't. Is. A lot of them don't. A lot of the city cops know who he is, and I go up to the city cops and say, "Hey, you guys, law enforcement, 165 years ago." Yeah. Check it and out. They know. And they, they love it. Is. They love it. Guys yeah. our age, dude, not, not very many kids know who yeah. Joaquin Marietta was. Because but they're this not is our, This is our history. Yeah, they're not teaching this in school. No. Right. This okay. is our history. There's been a lot of books written, but this is the only truthful thing that's been written in the last 50 years. All right. And it's a very those, controversial subject. Where are those questions I had? Oh, here they are. Okay, oh, here's, okay. A, here's an one. email question right here. It says, uh, was Marietta a... California Robin Hood or simply a myth? I don't think he was Robin Hood, but go ahead. No, he wasn't Robin Hood, and he wasn't a myth. He was a, he was a regular guy. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's so a all victim of circumstances. That's all. Victim You're making him out to be a good guy he when wasn't he wasn't. that bad. I mean, he did a lot of bad things, and the guys did. around him, his gang was a lot worse than he was. He still had a No, heart. but he allowed it to happen. Well... He, he was calling. He was he pulling the trigger. He was calling the, the shots. Well, he wasn't necessarily the leader. He was You're just one of the more knowledgeable type of okay. that era. All right. Okay, but he wasn't necessarily the leader. All these guys had their own mind. Mm -hmm. You know, so he, he he could maybe influence the group, but he wasn't necessarily the stone cold leader. Right. All right. Uh, time to take a break here on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. We're going to come back in just a few minutes uh, and talk with uh, Kelly Cadwallader a little bit more uh, before your man Kobe gets here. 436-MeTV, option 11. Hey, Lorenzo Neal and Turf Medics, the sponsor of this program today, back in a moment. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. The Ballad of Andy and Barney. Andy and Barney were lawmen, bravest you ever did see. Warned ever croak in the record book to stay out of Mayberry. They were the law. Yes, they were the law, and, and they didn't know fear. The Andy Griffith Show. I guess to sum it up, you could say there's three reasons why there's so little crime in Mayberry. There's Andy, and there's me, and baby makes three. <laughs> now on Me TV Fresno. Okay, was Joaquin Murrieta a murderous thug? Is that all he was? No, of course not. He was just a regular young man trying to make his way in the world. 
<laughs> well, what a lifestyle to live, just trying to make your way in the world. Uh, plans for a follow-up book. That's an email question. No? I have some other stories that I, I could have possibly <laughs> incorporated into this, but it wasn't directly related to Joaquin Marietta, so yeah. I left them out. But there are a lot of other good stories up in the Sierras right here about our area. Yeah. Uh, Gene Rose, an old B staff writer. Gene's written a couple books about the logging towns up here yeah. and, and what was going on. It's very interesting stuff. I like this book. I, I did enjoy it. And um, I, I want to talk to you more as we look at the book Gold Rush uh, Bandita about Joaquin Murrieta. It's right here. And we also have the graphic. We'll put that up too. But hey, so tell me, um, there's the book right there. What does this book cost if you want to buy it? Sixteen ninety five. Okay. You can't um, go to the movies for sixteen ninety five. And it's a better story than what you're seeing at the movies. That's why we need Alan Autry with Dirt Road Productions. Okay. Come on, Alan, call me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand this email, but uh, go ahead. Uh, talk about uh, Chick Chansey Casino. It's been shut down for how many months now? I don't know anything months. about Chick Chansey, John. <laughs> Look, there's Chick Chansey right there. Yes, you do. Oh, I give me that. Why is it shut down for so long? Is it because the tribes don't get along? They can't decide who controls the money? Is well, that it? The Native Americans that are affiliated with Chick Chansey, as far as I can tell, if you asked them all what they want for lunch, nobody would agree. Yeah. yeah so I, know what you mean. I believe that that's the, the root of the whole problem up there. Mm -hmm. And I've distributed my book up through Coarse Gold, Oakhurst, and Mariposa, and they, all the retailers up there told me that since the casinos closed down, uh, their business has dropped off 40 to 50 percent. Amazing. This is Fresno Bee video, uh, courtesy of the Fresno Bee, of course. Uh, what happened uh, when guns were drawn in that casino? Uh, <laughs> this was back in October of 2014. So this place has been shut down, what, October, November, December, four months now. So it's affecting business in the foothills, is that correct? Uh, according to the retailers up there, yeah. It's down 40%, 50% from when the casino was open. It brought a lot of people into the area. And when you, when you combine the fact that there, there isn't much snow up there, there was early on, but not now, that has an effect as well. Yeah, I, uh, my ranch is uh, over by the Mona Wind Casino. Mm -hmm. And I drove all through that whole area over to Mariposa, and it looked to me like, because of the drought, almost 10% of the forest is dead. Yeah, so you're looking at a major economic hit for the foothills We're of this in area. Trouble. Yeah. We're in trouble. Yeah, and Chick Chan now, as we look at this video here, uh, this was a, a <laughs> almost a shakedown by one of the tribes. Guns were drawn. You remember this video from October. Uh, amazing. Then a federal judge, you know, he came in and shut the place down and said, you know what, uh, you're putting patrons at risk, you're putting employees at risk. Yet how many employees lose their jobs over this as well? So um, the economic impact, do you ever see this place, because your, your ranch is up there near, near the casino, do you ever see this place reopening at any point or sure. maybe being sold off? Sure, there's too much money involved for it not to reopen if they could just agree on some things. But they won't. I mean, this thing looks like it's going to linger on and on and on. Never say never. I didn't say <laughs> never. I well, you said, said it won't. Well, it, it won't anytime it soon. It will. I, it won't anytime soon. Too much money involved. I don't know what they're doing with it, John. I don't yeah. know. I yeah, you know. just know what economic impact it's had in the in valley. The there, area, because, yeah. In the area, because yeah. you, you have your ranch up there. All right. Okay, we're going to take a break here. Kelly Cadwallader is our guest, and he wrote the book. It's right here. It's called Gold Rush Bandito, and uh, you can call in at 436-ME-TV, option 11. Lorenzo Neal, Turf Medics, is our sponsor today. Back in a moment. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. 
Spinner's Records. The Valley's Classic Vinyl Headquarters. Carries an inventory of over a half million classic LPs. Choose from rock, rhythm and blues, country, jazz, and oldies but goodies. Spinner's also buys and sells fully restored old school stereo gear and LP. You can now get a turntable receiver and speakers for below $250. We carry name brands like Morant, Sansui, and Pioneer. At Spinner's, we sell memories. Spinner's Records at 639 East Olive Avenue in the Tower District. Hey, we're back here with Kelly Cadwallader, and he wrote this book called Gold Rush Bandito. So getting back to the Chickchancy thing, do you see any kind of solution anytime soon? I just hope they can all get together and agree. What's it going to take for them to agree? I mean, you know those, you know the people in the foothills better than city folks, it's right? A very, it's a very private community, and it's their business. I try not to keep I try not to stick my nose in their business, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I keep my nose. <laughs> For good reason, right? For very good reason. You don't want somebody pulling a, a Joaquin Murrieta on you, no. right? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, so um, quickly, because we only got a couple of minutes left with you, and then our next guest is coming in. What, um, what's in your plans for a book uh, next time? Are you uh, gonna Are you gonna do a follow up on Murrieta? Or are you gonna do a, a, a totally different book? I probably I I have nothing in nothing no works in the in the plan. Let's hope it doesn't take you thirty five years to well, do it. Whatever it is, because this have, took you thirty five years. Thirty eight actually. Thirty eight. But I I've uh, I have other stories, but I don't think it's enough for another book. And, really? And these are so difficult to do. It yeah, takes I know. so many hours to research all this stuff. And then you got you're, you're dodging bullets from all these guys throwing axes at you about where where'd you get this information where'd you get that information, and yeah. uh, handed down stories from old timers uh, can you basically got it from be substantiated. Most of the information you got for this book came from newspaper articles that were written back in the 1800s. Is that uh, correct? A good chunk of it, sure. Yeah, and talking to people. In old the area. time stories. When I was a kid, yeah. I'm 10 years old. My dad was a county supervisor. For Fresno, yeah. and he dragged me and my brothers all around up in the mountains, and we'd listen to all these stories from the old timers, and I remembered them, and I wrote them down and started compiling them. Yeah, that's why it took so long. Yeah, Kelly, thank you very much. Hey, I want to see. Th You're uh, welcome, John. Three, three fingered Jack. I want somebody to dig up that jar at Millerton. How's this? <laughs> <laughs> all that right. Would be good. Hey, thank you very much. Come back again. Anytime. All right. Thanks Kelly Cadwallader. Hey, an author, and the book is right here, uh, Gold Rush Bandito. We're going to be back with our second guest of the day here on Connect With Me. Today's uh, program sponsored by Turf Medics and your buddy, Lorenzo Neal. Back in a moment. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. This fall, there is a place familiar and inviting, timeless and warm. Me TV, a place all your own that you can call home. Hi, honey, I'm home. This fall, home is where you'll find me. You mean to tell me that's all there is to it? That's all. Me TV, Fresno, channel 43.6 and Xfinity 187. Spinner's Records, the Valley's Classic Vinyl Headquarters, carries an inventory of over a half million classic LPs. Choose from rock, rhythm and blues, country, jazz, and oldies but goodies. Spinner's also buys and sells fully restored old school stereo gear and LP. You can now get a turntable receiver and speakers for below $250. We carry name brands like Morant, Sansui, and Pioneer. At Spinner's, we sell memories. Spinner's Records at 639 East Olive Avenue in the Tower District. Attention all units, we 
have reports of two motorcycle cops protecting California's highway. That's for us, good buddy. The Men of Chips are on BTV. Hi, I'm John Baker. I'm John Baker. It's Officer Baker. He's the blonde one. Hi there. Officer Poncherello, man. Frank Poncherello. Well, I'm Frank Poncherello. And he's the one who's Eric Estrada. There's no way I wouldn't remember a name like that. Catch the blonde one and the one who's Eric Estrada. On now Chips. on MeTV Fresno. Xfinity 187. Frigidaire. It means the first electric refrigerator. The first compact electric range. Now, there's the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures, so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. And back here on the program on a Friday morning here on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. We're glad that uh, Lorenzo Neal, your former running back for the Bulldogs and uh, for the NFL, is our sponsor today with Turf Medics. Hey, I want to talk about our second guest here of the day. He's a well-known public figure right here in the Central Valley and has been for about, I want to say 100 years, but he's not that old, but I'll say close to many, 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 many years. Anyway, he is the co-host with Kim Stevens on a Great Day on KMPH Fox 26. And here's a clip of our guy, Kopi. And fog, unfortunately, is going to be with us every morning. And uh, once the fog lifts, we're looking for partly cloudy to mostly sunny conditions. And now we're back here uh, in the arena at the Save Mart Center. Oh, my goodness. Katie, hurry up. Save me. Oh, the zombies are here. Katie, save me from the zombies, please. Oh, please. Oh. It's okay. Is it okay? They're friendly zombies. Oh, <laughs> welcome. Well, they're friendly. Hi. They are friendly. It got me scared there for a second. Well, tell me about the zombies and the show they're going to be performing in. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Huh? You can't eat it. You can't eat it. But thank you, though. The zombies are friends of Jack's skeletons, uh -huh. and they're going to be doing a Halloween spook. And we've got some villains that will come out and try to scare them away with Jack's skeleton. And hopefully Mickey will come and save the day. Well, I think Mickey usually does save the day, thank goodness. And thank goodness he shows up for the show. <laughs> um, now, tell us ab about the cast. And uh, do you have uh, cast characters from all over the world? That's right, from all the way, and here he is live hey. in the flesh. Just at, did you fly in on the chopper, the no. private chopper? Oh, I, well, I, I, hate to, I, you know, I, mean, I, I hate to brag. Come on, you know what I mean, Johnny? You know what I mean? Good to see you, buddy. Hey, good to see you. How are you? Hey, doing great, doing great. How are you doing? So I'm doing good. Yeah. To yeah. Friday, it's before the Super Bowl. Oh, so that's good. Wait. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so that was at that uh, was yesterday down at Selland Arena. Selland. Okay. Yeah, they, they, right. uh, the, uh, they still use that place. They still do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they okay. do, which is wonderful. No, it's which a is, great arena. It's it awesome. I mean, my brother and I. When we were kids, used to sell snow cones and soft drinks at Selland Arena, going yeah. up and down the stands. Get your Coke, get your Coke right here, get your Coke. You know, we'd walk home with 20 bucks, man. And hey, I, I that, at that time, at that age, that was awesome. I heard, I, and I have people tell me mm -hmm. that they wish they played basketball at Selland. I'm mm -hmm. talking about the Bulldogs. Yeah. Because it's a better arena. You know, there's more space to sit. That's true. There is. There I, is. I've heard that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, but, obviously, what is it, 17,000? Yeah, but they I mean, still it's, use yeah. it for events. Oh, so yeah, it's, they it's, do. It's and that, good, that's wonderful. It's a wonderful. great arena. It's, and it I brings like people it. downtown, which is good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. that's exactly right. Yeah. So what are you doing these days? Uh, uh, just, how are you? you? I'm doing good, doing great. Just working, you know, like everybody else. Just, you know, get up in the morning, go to work, come home, hmm, go to sleep, go to work, you know, and have how fun. How do you do Visit that? My how do you do that? So it's on five hours. Five huh? hours, five, to, five oh. to ten in the morning, yeah. How many years now? Well, great day is actually, uh, we're in going uh, about 11 and a half years, 11, a little more than 11 years. Kim and I started. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's 11 years. Yeah, it's so, a great so, day. Now, once in a while, you fill in on the 10 o'clock. Yeah, news. we did the other night. Kevin uh, was unable to, and, and Jim wasn't able to fill in for Kevin. So, you know, they called in third string, and they said, hey, come in here. We'll take you off the bench. Can you do it at 10 o'clock? <laughs> so I said, yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, so yeah. But it's no big deal. You know, you go in for an hour, take care of business, and go home. Did you sleep overnight at the station? Well, no, I didn't quite do that. <laughs> John, I was did not ask quite you. do that. No, not quite. Not yet. You don't have a cot over there? Well, or something? sometimes <laughs> we, we should, but no, no. I, I went home and then I came back and did the show. Hey, you know, who else better to ask? Why in that is you know is is the big man upstairs? Is he so ticked off at us? What? He's why doesn't it rain in oh the my Central goodness. Valley? It's just a bad there weather pattern. There is no 
rain. Bad weather pattern, man. We're just not getting storms. Storms are not coming <laughs> they in. They bypass yeah, us. They buy, like yeah, the, for the last couple of days, you've had two storms come up from Baja. You know? Yeah. We usually go down to Baja. The storms are coming to visit us. I said, come on, bring the whole family this time. Bring it all. Bring Grandma and Grandpa. Soak us real good. But most of the rain, you know, Southern Cal comes up through, uh, you know, maybe the grapevine. Got some stuff in the foothills, you know. Yeah. And then it shifts to the east. It just goes into Why? Four Corners area. What's and going getting on? snow and rain. I said, come up to California. It's a wonderful place. The valley, we love you, you know. And those storms veer to the right. You got high pressure out in the Pacific. And uh, it just kind of shifts them and pushes them the other way. It's unfortunate. It's sad. It's sad. We I'm got 22 hundredths of an inch uh, with a little storm that came through the other day. For we, did, we thought we'd get maybe a trace or two, but we got 22 hundredths. What about the snow up there? The snow, mm -hmm. very little, very little snow. Really? You know, might get a, you know, they might get some of the crest of the Sierra with this one coming through, but most of the energy, you know, you look at the uh, satellite and radar, and it's mostly in the Pacific. I mean, the uh, desert Southwest. The New Mexico now is getting some good snowfall. You know, wow. Arizona getting some nice rain. Uh, Kern County mountains and deserts, and for us here in the valley, I mean, it's just like, it's like we're not on their schedule you know it's like when they see, when I walk down the street people see me can they go the other way it's yeah. like the storm sees Fresno yeah. they go the other way well <laughs> is there Here's a Fresno right here? there let's go I don't know yeah, Johnny right. I have no idea what it's happening <laughs> ah, tell me, me I don't know no, I don't no, know no. just buy that lottery yeah, just, ticket that's yeah, all that's it that's I it. mean that's amazing it doesn't it's rain sad. here yeah, it is unfortunate. amazing I don't get it but yeah. it doesn't well rain. we're not getting the rain that's for sure I don't know why yeah. uh, caller you're there uh, you're on the air Hi, John. Hi, Copey. Hey, how are you? Good morning to the both of you. Good morning. I uh, just wanted to say, how are you guys going to handle with the new uh, Greek broadcaster here in the <laughs> valley uh, with Chris Gabriel? Oh, yeah. Uh, you guys are the, the king uh, Greek broadcasters here in uh, Fresno. And, what? Uh, now there's somebody new in the mix. So. Well, you know what? We're going to start hey, our own network. We're going to call it the local geeks. I mean Greeks. <laughs> you know. No, I, I, got, I was on his show last week. Yeah. And a uh, great guy. Great guys. We're really from Chicago. You know, the families in the restaurant business, the diners, you know. And we had a wonderful time on the show. on for about a half hour. And we talked about uh, just about everything. You know, television. Yeah. We talked about, uh, you know, Fresno and the Valley. We talked about things that he's going to enjoy here. So he's thrilled to be here. And I really enjoyed his company. It was a pleasure to be on the show. Yeah. Any other questions? You there? Oh, the caller's gone. Anyway, oh. hey, so where'd he go? I just I, uh, well, I, uh, I, he disappeared. Well, you didn't yeah, have hors d'oeuvres. Like, that's why they leave. You bring he's, food. He's like the, he's like those storms. He yeah. sees us coming. Boom! boom here's the other way. <laughs> we got to take a break already. We do. Okay, got to take a break on Connect with Me. Back in just a moment. Our sponsor here, Turf Medics and Lorenzo Neal. Hey, four three six Me TV Option Eleven. As a pro athlete, I played on green grass my entire career and was stunned to find a product that could make my home look as good as the turf I've grown to love. Turf Medics is a revolutionary new turf coloring system designed to reduce watering and mowing. Call 1-888-936-0444 or visit the website at www.turfmedics.com to learn more about Turf Medics by ProTurf, the real experts in real green grass. Spinner's Record. The Valley's Classic Vinyl Headquarters. Carries an inventory of over a half million classic LP shoes from rock, rhythm and blues, country, jazz, and oldies but goodies. Spinner's also buys and sells fully restored old school stereo gear and LP. You can now get a turntable receiver and speakers for below $250. We carry name brands like Morant, Sansui, and Pioneer. At Spinner's, we sell memories. Spinner's Records at 639 East Olive Avenue in the Tower District. Hmm. Translation, the Red Apple Cafe. Mmm, on Shaw, in Clovis. <sighs> Larry, where did you get all these customers? It's my family, Jack. I told you they were in town. Enjoy dinner. Oh. Did we enjoy the dinner? Yeah. David, you go ahead. Uh, I can't go. I've been out there. I get lost. <laughs> go ahead. Come, my friend. Come, escape. Come on. Oh, it's good. You gotta climb the gate. Stop. Hey, Kate, you're looking even better than I remembered. 
Thank you, Aristotle. You still like him without mustard? Yeah. Uh, hey, you two, uh, go ahead. Uh, whatever. I'm not here. Hey, come on. Thanks. We thank you for the food upon our table, but we must not forget the poor, unfortunate families who have less than we do. <laughs> Are you suggesting, Sheriff Campbell, that we arm every citizen? Because if you are, I'm afraid we're going to have to be afraid of something else. Shooting each other. No, Senator, no. I'm not talking about everybody, everybody should get a gun here. Well, I don't think increasing violence is the answer to increased violence. I thought this matter had been resolved. We heard a story from the captain of your yacht, and I'm here to question Lady Rowan herself. Come on. So. Here I am, cruising you, SRA, and my very good buddy, Mr. Fitzsimmons, Theosikures, kicks Bucket before he can hear how out of sight my English is becoming. English terrific. Uh, thank you, brother. I'm telling you, life is no bowl of cherries. The bull did not lose its job as the mascot. But What's I'm that? Sure the bull's name is M Madonna? Oh, no, Maradona. Maradona. Ah, okay. If yeah. I'm saying that correctly. All right. <laughs> I'd rather they call the bull Madonna. Oh, How about fun. you, Kobe? You know, I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what it, with that thing in my face, I'm out of here. Who is that stupid guy sitting in the middle? Hey, well, I don't know. He's, uh, he's a very nice young man. Very <laughs> yeah. nice young man. Ma'am, are you there? Call her. Yes. Go yes. ahead. This question is for Kobe. Yes. Uh, How are you? Ag show. Cooking, what day and hour are you going to be out there? Okay, I'm going to be at the, uh, the Ag Show on Wednesday, and I'll be cooking at noon with the chef from Harris Ranch. Looking forward to it. It's a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time. Yeah, so we'll see we, you there. We missed you last year. Well, okay, no wonder it wasn't great. successful. We'll be there. Wonderful. Come up and say hello, okay? Okay, I will. And, and, we'll, include you. You, and we'll include you in the Big 10-Day Forecast also. Right, we were that last time, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Good. Oh, you're welcome. Have a great day. So when does that take place? Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Oh, at, at, at the Ag, Ag Center. Ag, Ag yeah, Ag down Center. Tillery. Tillery. I'll be there Wednesday. Yeah, that's it's a three-day event, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's huge, yeah. It's huge. Are you a kidding? Lot of people. From all over the world. You know, you get vendors from all over yeah. the world, and people come from all over the world to uh, to observe the ladies in Ag. You know, I had nothing to do the other day, so I watched uh, movies. You mean just I the other day? Yeah, just, just the other day. Yeah, it's, it's mostly every day. <laughs> I have nothing to do. But uh, yeah. I, uh, the other night, I yeah. think it was last weekend, I sat down uh, and watched this movie called Beverly Hills Cop. Two. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's still and playing. I saw some it's guy playing. new in there. Yeah, I think that was you. Yeah, yeah. The guy looked like you. Yeah, same ugly <laughs> mug. Same ugly mug. You know. What year was that? Gosh, that was uh, I think eighty. See, we, we left LA in eighty six. I think it was like eighty five. And uh, I think eighty five. Yeah. Nineteen eighty five. How many yeah. shows did you do down there? Oh my gosh! When see, you were in LA, I, yeah, I can't count them. But, yeah, Three's Company, Incredible Hulk. You saw a bunch there. You know, I just uh, did enough. You know, where it was great for ten years. Could you make a yeah. living at it? Were you? Well, see, a good that was the problem. Acting is. I mean, uh, you got to love. Were you waiting it, tables dude. at the same time? Well, you know, time, besides <laughs> that, I was doing telemarketing. I was hanging drapes. You know, I was doing what? all kinds of different jobs. Really? In between the acting. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Okay, caller, are you there? Go ahead. Yeah, good morning, John and Kopi. Yes. Kopi, this is little Eddie. Hey, Ashton. how are you? Uh, hey, pretty good, pretty good. Just a couple questions on uh, the Armenian genocide, the 100th anniversary. Yes. That's, that's here, this yes. year. Um, are they going to continue having events being advertised? I can't say advertised, but shared with the public that, that will be coming up as uh, weeks and months go by well, that's one question yeah that's one question and is are they going to show a live broadcast from new york on your station you think you know that in april that i do not know because i'm not in charge of the programming i don't i don't i'm okay. not in charge of the programming but all they got to do is you know let the station be aware of what's happening and if they're able to i'm sure they will if not uh i'm sure it's probably will be covered in the news if nothing else yeah, and maybe on the internet too. I yeah, think. obviously the internet. I'm oh. I'm sure they will be feeding it on the internet. You know, streaming what's it. What's the uh, What's yeah. the actual date there? Is it April twenty fourth? Fifth. Twenty fourth. Yes, yeah. is when they uh, will commemorate 
50 anniversary. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very big this year. Well, yeah, you absolutely. know, with the, with the advent of the Internet, I mean, there's so much information that can go out. That's probably one of your best forms of getting the information out about the genocide and what happened to the Armenian people. A uh, million and a half, unfortunately, uh, we lost due to the, uh, you know, Ottoman and Turkish Empire. So uh, the, the Internet, obviously, you can dis, uh, d disseminate information quicker and probably get to more people that you want to get the information to. Yeah. It, yes, and it, you know the Fresno State Monument that's going up that be, uh, off and on. It'd yeah. be nice to have a picture of it going up if if that could work out. Well, yeah, absolutely. What hey, you thanks. need to do is just send the information to our newsroom, like you would, and okay. I obviously send it to all the stations in the market because it is a okay. big event and uh, it's important to uh, you know a large portion of our population here because uh, of the Armenian population. Look, you have wonderful many Armenian churches in in, in our area, so yeah. make sure you get the information to our news departments. Yeah. Okay. We'll do. And Thank and a lot of the, a lot of those events you're talking about are streaming live on the internet too. So you might want to check that out. Yes. Okay. okay. Appreciate your help too. Oh, you're Thanks welcome. Both. Have right. a great day. Thank you very much. So, Kopi, you've been yeah. doing this for what? Eleven years now. The great day and and uh, yeah, we it's eleven years. Eleven so, years. So how has it changed? Uh, you know how what? Is the internet and these cell phones and oh my all that goodness. Stuff? You know, Twitter, the, the, Facebook, yeah, how uh, has it changed what well, you guys well, do Well, this takes, day? well, it, obviously what we like to do is uh, while we're doing the show, you know, putting on Twitter, on, on, on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, things that are coming up to let viewers yeah. know. You know, and that's part of part of what we do now. It's not yeah. just doing the show because this is instant communication. I can get the information to you at your home or if you're in your car, wherever you're at. On Twitter. On Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, yeah. you know, hey, check us out. In 20 minutes, we're giving away tickets to such and such. Or we're having, hey, you know, it's adopt a pet day. You're looking for a pet. 20 minutes, check it out. You can, you, who knows? You might find the pet you want. Good thing my son's not here. He'd hack into your phone. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wait, what's his photo doing here? <laughs> hey, so is it a grinding schedule to do? five hours every day well you know what we have a great staff we have wonderful producers executive producer our news director you know our editors our crew so it, it, it's it's it is five hours, and you, people think, "My gosh, how do you do five hours?" No, well, but you we got to get up early. Well, you got to get up early. I mean, you know, you know what? If you're in television and you're on the air, there are no real d normal hours. Either you're on in the morning or you're on in the evening. Very few people have a shift that goes from nine to five and be on the air. Nobody does. Nobody does really, yeah. because you're doing in the evening. You're doing a five and a six and a seven. You're out of the house. Yeah. Or you're doing a six, seven, and maybe the a ten or an eleven. You're out. Then in the morning, five to ten, or or five to seven, depending on how many hours the morning shows. Yeah, and go. broadcasting, there is no nine to five job. It doesn't exist. No, it really doesn't. It really no, doesn't because it doesn't of, exist. of what it demands. No. Yeah. So what's coming up next week besides the ag show? We got what? How much time? Thirty. They're minute 30. Uh, uh, I've got school visits. Uh, I'm going to Dinuba to visit a school. I'm going to McKinley School next week. Um, and a few what do other you tell events. the kids when you go out there? You how, do you tell, how do you tell them to stay out of a gang? You know the story with Janessa Ramirez, yeah, tragic. Yeah. Uh, apparently it was a gang-related shooting, yeah. stray bullet. Yeah. I mean, gangs, isn't that, a, that's a dead end. Yeah, you know, you know what, I, uh, part of my presentation, along with having fun with the weather, uh, I talk to the kids about making good choices and, uh, you know, staying, staying out of gangs, staying away from drugs. And basically, I have a phrase on the back of my little photo that I have, autographed photo with the, with the Kopi car from yeah. Ed Dina's. It's the Equinox that we have now. Okay. And, um, and I say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. So really, it's, it's a universal thought. I'm sure it's uh, familiar in, in many cultures. Who you hang out with is kind of kind of dictate who you're going to be. If you hang out with gangbangers or people that do drugs and that kind of stuff, w what's your influence? Yeah. That, okay? But if you hang out with kids that are responsible, listen to their parents, listen to their teachers, do their homework, you know, behave, make good choices, more than likely, you're not going to go in the other direction, yeah. you know? And, 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 and the other thing is, is trying to get people that have made the wrong choices to hopefully turn them around so they can do good with their lives. Out of time, Kobe. Well, got 10 seconds. Hey, thanks, for, thanks for inviting me. Hey, come back. John. Anything, just come let me back. know. Hey, I'll be here. From Greek to Greek, right? Absolutely. And we got the other Greek yeah. across town. What's his yeah. name? Christopher, Christopher Gabriel. Christopher Gabriel. Opa. That's right. Opa. All right. And don't forget, you got that news conference at 12 o'clock. Jerry Dyer, the police chief, talking about the Janessa uh, Ramirez case. Kopi, thanks a lot. Thank you, John. We'll see you on Great Day. And we're going to be back Monday. Our guest is going to be George Hostetter from the Fresno Bee. He's going to break it all down for us, this water issue, that vote that's coming up on the 5th of February. Have a great weekend and go Seahawks. See you back.